This is Rocka Mujamin, is with the guys from Preacher. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Nate Garrison, and I'm from Preacher. So how you doing, man? It's, uh, what's, what's today, Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> just getting back from Los Angeles, so we played this weekend and just trying to get my brain back. So, um, so far, so good. How's life treating you? Uh, life's cool. Um, I mean, I still get to you, uh, rock and roll at my age and uh, do cool interviews like this one, you know? So for those who are watching and not familiar with you, can you tell me all about the band? All about the band in what, like three minutes here. Um, we started in Reno, Nevada. Um, the three of the guys have been playing music together for the, probably the last better age of like a decade. And then um, our drummer also played in local bands here in Reno. We all kind of met up and started our own group, which became Preacher. And um, it all kind of started out, I guess, just demoing out some music. And we just liked what we heard, and it just kind of kept going from there. And your new single is Live Life Lombo Tommy? Uh, Live Life Lobotomy, that is correct. Oh now, that God. is our most recent drop. No, you, you're good. You're good. You're, you're doing fantastic. <laughs> but we are actually dropping a new single called Dystopia. So you're the first person I've got to interview about this one, and it comes out February 17th, which is going to be awesome. That track rips, bro. Super angro. I love it. Nice. You listen to it while you've been boxing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. And this is off your upcoming EP, right? That is correct. The upcoming EP is called Blur. Um, the reason we called it that is because we wrote it very, very fast. <laughs> Will the rest of the album sound like the single? No, which is kind of interesting. That's a great question. I think it's probably one of the better questions I've gotten. Um, it is kind of a taste of like the caliber of what's to come, but there's still so much good stuff to digest in the record that's coming. So kind of like that uh, bubble gum they chew. Have you ever seen Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory? Yeah. Which one? Did you see the first one oh, or both. the remake with Johnny Depp? Okay. So the first one where Violet eats the actual the gum, right? And it's like different flavors each time. It's like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. that's how I can describe this next record that's coming out bro what was in that garbage bag in that video <laughs> okay so in this music video um, we had to shoot it at night and during the day so to make it look like night we actually had to wrap our bus in like gigantic black plastic like painter tarp and so what I did was actually bunched it all up together and like had to tape it in to kind of look like a body. And it like uh, was very disturbing to everybody, but it, it looked really good. <laughs> but it's all just black plastic. So no filler, no pillows, nothing like that. It's just basically all the tarp we had left over from the shoot. You should sell those clown masks, man. <laughs> those clown masks i don't know if we could ever remake them we actually got them from spirit of the halloween and it was funny because we tried on a ton of them like there was a lot of creepier masks and everything but for some reason you put that uh i guess that clown mask kind of fit me a little too well so you can like see my eyes really bad and it was just disturbing so that's why we went with that one so you guys are out of uh reno right reno right? nevada that is correct did you God, did you guys have any side jobs at the ranches out in the uh, Fallon? <laughs> uh, no, not at all. I don't think we're pretty enough to be out there, to be completely honest. Hey, man, you don't got to be pretty. Just got to work. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. I see you're, you are asking for some donations. What are you looking for, for besides some cheese? Oh, uh, so it's, it, anything really helps, you know, like, um, I mean, this is the last thing we wanted to do was ask for donations to help us fix our bus. But since like, we're still up and coming artists and like our, our net worth is kind of like stretched to a point where it just kind of keeps us out on the road. Um, our lifeblood is that bus. <laughs> so for us to go like borrow and try to fix it ourselves, it's just way out of our, our realm of what we can do. So if anybody is not able to donate any money, um, a simple share or even just a stream of the music, um, anything really, word of mouth, tell your friends about us, just any type of exposure 
um, goes a very long way in that type of situation. Well, maybe you should go down to the ranch for a few extra bucks. <laughs> like I said, man, I don't know if I'm pretty enough to make those kind of dollars. Like I think I I'd said, be turning out too much. <laughs> you don't got to be pretty, man. You don't got to be pretty. Oh. Or you can start a medals uh, only fan page. Oh, dude, I don't think anybody would subscribe to that, to be completely honest. Like, just you know, we wear shirts and stuff, but when we start taking them off, everything looks horrendous, you know what I mean? Just play naked, just like, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, oh, oh. Okay. What was it like the first time you heard yourself on the radio? Um, it, it's surreal, to be honest. Like, kind of like you weren't even there. And um, it becomes one of those things where it's just like you never thought that would ever happen, and when it does... Um, it's it's something that's never not cool, right? So even if like I would be like ninety years old and they're like playing my song on the radio, I'll still be like, "Holy cow, that's amazing!" So do you have a big tour plan this year at all? Um, this summer we're looking to hit a lot more major markets that we haven't done yet before. Um, I can't speak too much on it just yet, but once those things are announced, I would love to come back and talk to you about it. Where are you at, actually? Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York. I've actually played there before. That place is a lot of fun. Yeah. Cold, but a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cold. So if we make it out your way, and it's an all-ages show, I'll make sure to, to hook you and your parents up so you guys can come out and see us. We'll give you guest list spots and everything and hang out. And eat some buffalo wings. All right. That's our famous thing. That's our... Except for the bills. <laughs> Except for the bills. Mm. They did good. They, yeah. They've been doing good. They've been doing oh. a lot better than they used to. Let's just put it that way. Bro, we don't want to talk about this. My show will go to <laughs> if we talk about the Bills. Look, oh, okay. Okay, I'm here. I can only say this. The Bills got destroyed. Oh, oh God. Oh, my God. <laughs> They've been dead. Oh, my God. <laughs> what did I say? Oh, my God. I was trying to say, did it. I was trying to say, they did bad. And I said, did it. I just went like that. <laughs> what is it like touring after the pandemic? Touring after the pandemic is is nice. <laughs> I'm let you know that. Being at home was cool and all, but oh man, it was such a nightmare just sitting there because the to tour, it takes a special person, right? It's like uh, you got to fall in love with not being home all the time and having the luxuries of like your own beds and stuff like that. So, but uh, being out, just being able to share music and seeing people just kind of show up like how they have been, um, it's just been magical, man. Like, I, I couldn't be more grateful. I've been to a few shows and fans seem more into the shows after not being able to rock out for a couple of years. Say that again. I've been to a few shows and fans seem more into the shows after not being able to rock out for years. Oh, yeah. I mean, I wish we were even close to being like a hardcore band because like those shows look nutty, right? Like everybody jumping on stage and crowd surfing and everything like that. But yeah, I would say the crowd participation has uh, come back tenfold. Instead of everybody just like standing in the crowd, just like staring at the band like this, where they're just like, <laughs> while they're playing the entire time. What is life like for, uh, what is life like on the road for you? Life like on the road. Um, it's a lot of not eating enough <laughs> and not sleeping enough. And then also not drinking enough water. But you try to figure out those things as you're kind of going through your day. Um, and then a lot of trying to explain what you see out on the road to people that don't go. Because you take pictures of things and it's just not, um, it doesn't resonate as what they actually look like. Like big landscapes and all the gorgeous things that like ha the road has to offer that you just don't get to see on a whim. So that would be like my day to day. But as far as my day to day, it's literally just waking up. Uh, finding a place to use the restroom, <laughs> drinking enough water if I can, and getting ready to play and uh, hanging out with whoever wants to hang out with me. What's on your rider? Oh, we don't have one because we're not that big yet. But if we did, oh, okay, I'll, I'll take that back. We usually ask for alcohol and water most of the time. And that's usually it. If they want to supply us food, we're totally down because we are vegetable fiends. But uh, yeah, no, we're not picky at all, man. If they can provide it, awesome. Um, if our writer is like tending to take up too much money, we have no problem just to split it with the other bands that are with us or, or even the local bands that are on the show that day. 
ever have a crazy interaction with a fan? Um, yes. <laughs> when we were at Blue Ridge Rock Festival, um, I don't know if this is inappropriate or not, but I'm going to go for it. Uh, <laughs> she comes walking up because we tour in like a school bus, right? A very small one. And um, the first thing she said, though, she says, hey, nice bus. And we're like, oh, thank you. And then she turns around and says, um, is that the bus you guys went to school in? Because it's a smaller bus. So like kind of making fun of us for riding a short bus. So and she was just absolutely off her rocker. So, yeah, that was one of the crazy interactions we had with a fan. She was very rude, but very nice at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> What's next for you? What's next? Um, getting this record out this year. Uh, we got a ton of cool collaborations coming out this year, too. So instead of just trying to pile on a ton of original music, um, we decided that we wanted to start teaming up with some of our friends. So some of the music you'll hear coming out is from really cool musicians that we look up to and are friends with on top of the record that we're going to release this year. Um, lots of lots and lots and lots of shows. How do my followers follow you? Your best option is to go to our website, which is a lot of fun. I spent a lot of time on this. It's Preacher, NV for Nevada, right? Dot com. So PreacherNV.com. And you can actually access all of our social sites there from YouTube, Facebook. You can even find our Spotify, Apple Music, everything you need to through our website. You guys got any cool merch? We got the coolest merch. <laughs> And that's also on our website, too. Now, I say it's the coolest because I make everything, but it is the coolest. <laughs> you know you got to hook your boy up with uh, some fresh gear. Hell yeah, man. You, got, you just got to DM me, bro. Tech, okay. uh, tell me your size. Do you like sweatshirts, t-shirts? What do you like? Yeah, I, I'm a large. I'm like an adult large. I'm, I'm a big uh, <laughs> I'm a big boy. Nah, I got you. What is your favorite memory from playing a show? Favorite memory? Um, I, I think it's just the people's faces because um, I, I don't know what it is. Every time I seem like we play, whether people have seen us like a hundred times or even a little bit, um, it seems like we're able to bring like an original fresh show to everybody. And just to see them kind of like deer in the headlights, that's my favorite thing in the world. So every time that happens, which is usually most of the time, uh, those are my most memorable moments. It's just to shock and awe the crowd. What is your worst? <laughs> the heat bro it's so hot up there so when you're sitting there sweating and you're dying and uh, especially if you have like any type of stomach problems or you're not feeling well that heat will get you every time fun question time you're on death row and it's time for a final meal what's on the menu ooh ooh I thought about this Pro ooh there's so much good stuff, but I think, well, shit, I might have changed recently because we had some good tacos down in LA and those are really good too. You know what? I'm going to say it. San Marcos Birria Tacos from LA. Just like a, like a buffet of them? Just like 24 of those? Oh, things? yeah. I, I'll probably die from how much I would eat. So it would probably save the government some money having to spend money on stuff to kill me with. You know, I can I could do it myself and just eat those tacos until I die. How are you going out? How am I going out? Guns are blazing. Climbing a clock tower. And as I'm jumping, I'm equally just blasting. You know, just falling while shooting guns, like John Wick style. If you could have any superpower, what would you choose? I'm thinking invisibility. Tell me that wouldn't be fun, right? That would be fun. It would be fun. Right? Because you could just be like a fly on the wall in certain things, you know? You can be like... Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you can get out to lunch earlier. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sneak out of the classroom. You can maybe, uh, like, um, what's it called? You can maybe just, like, fall asleep in class. Like, you just disappeared. Oh, yeah. Seriously, they're just to hear the snoring, but, like, you're not even in there. Yeah. So you can't get in trouble. <laughs> they're going to be like, Would you rob a bank, though? What? Would you rob a bank? Yeah. Would you rob a bank? Uh -huh. See, I would too. See, at least we're being honest about it, you know? So if there's any invisible people out there robbing banks, you at least know they're coming to our house, you know? Yeah. 
Let's just say you could choose any song ever written by any band, and you can change that song where you were the one who wrote it, and it was your song. What song would it be, and why? Ooh, uh, what is that? What what is what is that? Gang, Gangnam Style. That guy made millions off of just that. Oh my god, that this is more, dance oh my and that, god. that crazy song. <laughs> you are so right. I'm not even like any Korean or Chinese song. <laughs> That's W money, W money, instant money right yeah, there. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. I would, I would trade places with that guy in a heartbeat. Oh you my know? god, bro, bro, you can go from ED. <laughs> oh my god, I never really thought of that. I never thought of that. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> well, thank you for being on my show. I hope the next time he talks at the backstage at one of his shows, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, man. And I would love to see you in person. Hell yeah, brother. Thank you for having me. This has been an awesome experience. It's funny because my daughter is the same exact age as you, so it's kind of a trip. I could be your dad. <laughs> what? What? Huh? I'm just kidding. Okay. I'll talk to you next time, brother. I'll All be right. back anytime you want me. All okay? Right. But See when I show up in Buffalo, Buffalo Wings, me and you, rock and roll means it, bro. Oh, I'll take right? some pizza with that, though. See you, man. Oops, oh, yeah, I'm in. All, All right. the pizza. All right. See you, man. Have a nice day. All right, brother. See you, man. Bye. Mm-hmm.